Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for this Easter morning. We thank you, dear Father, for the beautiful weather you've given us to celebrate your sun rising and taking his seat beside you. So, Father, we ask that you bless the service today, bless all of the participants, all of those who are here to hear and see, and we ask that you bless this pastor as he bring the word to your children. So Lord, we thank you. We say thank you, thank you, thank you for all that you do. In Jesus' name, we pray, amen. Stand and sing with us because he lives. Huh? Christ the Lord has risen today. I just got a, a, a Christ the Lord has risen today.
come on, my God reigns. My God reigns. See how our God reigns.
the sopranos. I need all of the sopranos. Are you ready out there? All of the sopranos, you say it, go. on this Sunday morning. We welcome our online audience watching from around the world. Happy Easter friendship. As we prepare our hearts and minds now for a time of prayer, we take and bring everything that we have to a God who not only conquered sin, hell, death, and the grave, but we have a God who we can take everything to in prayer. We ask now that you take whatever posture of prayer that you find comfortable. Some might stand in this moment as a way of interceding for others. Our online audience might be typing their prayer requests into the comments now. But no matter where you are, no matter what place or space you're in, we serve a God that can hear and answer prayer. Kind Father, we thank you this morning for your love and your goodness to us. 
God for another Resurrection Sunday morning. Before we go any further, we just want you to know that we're grateful. So God, we say thank you. God, we say thank you for this Sunday morning, which gives us hope of your light in our lives. Oh God, we thank you for bringing us here today. We thank you for the family of faith that is known and named as friendship. Oh God, we ask that as we continue to worship you today, that God, you might receive all of the glory. God, we ask that you would answer and be with the prayer requests of your people. God, someone needs healing today. God, someone needs help. So God, won't you do what only you can for all of us that are here today? God, we thank you for what resurrection means in our lives, and we thank you that there is never the final say until you've had the final word. So, oh God, we ask that you would bless our pastor as he preaches to us today. God, we ask that you would continue to bless our church, that we would shine and share your light with this city named Charlotte that God in all things you might be glorified in us and that we might share your resurrecting power with our world. You're a great God. You're worthy of all of our praise. And this day, God, we say thank you in the life-giving name, in the powerful name of Jesus, we pray and we say together, amen. amen. Join us as we sing together how great thou art.
Think about it. We probably wouldn't even die for our own sins. And to think that he did and got back up. When I was unable to recover and stand up on my own two feet, on days when I could not look myself in the mirror for some of the things I had done yet and still, he did. Lord, on your way to Calvary, that cross had to be heavy to bear. Just imagine a crown of thorns Flat, flogged, beat, and bruised, all for my sins. These iniquities washed me white as snow. Jesus loves me. This I know. I know it by the webs on his body. I know it by the way he bled for me. I know it in the way he carried the cross, having no idea who I was yet, but knowing I needed that cross to be carried, knowing that his trod up to Calvary would mean life or death for me, I was on his mind. So much so that I was to die for. Mocked and ridiculed, nails in his hands and his feet, and just when they thought he was gonna stay where they put him, on that cross, in that grave. Let me tell y'all something about victory. AME Zion's Apostles' Creed says, he suffered under the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, but the third day, the third day he rose from the grave. The saints of old used to say, early one Sunday morning. What a God we serve to have laid down his life then turn around and live again. Use his blood to wash our sins and it was all for me. On my worst days, in my worst ways, I know I can find forgiveness in that blood, on that cross, in that walk, in his resurrection. There is salvation in Satan's defeat, a savior with an empty tomb. For little old Mia, just for me, he got up. He rose again for a sinner like me. And so goes the story of a true savior. There lies the victory.
among the dead. He is not here. He is not here. For he has risen as he said.
and peace be unto you from God our Father and Jesus Christ his Son our living Lord and our reigning and supreme Savior would you bow your head please Father as you and your Son and Spirit are one please allow this oneness to continue as we go forward together I trust you now for your word Bless it as only you can, for I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks be to God for all that we've experienced this morning. It's good to see all of you. It's been a while since I've seen this many of us gathered together in worship. It's good to see you. Thank our music and arts ministry and our musicians and all. In light of all that we've heard and we've experienced and shared, I want to read from Acts chapter 2, for it calls for response. Just to go through the Easter story without a response is... Uh, just going through the story. But I believe Acts chapter 2 
calls and lifts up the importance of after. Please notice verses. I'm going to read a couple of selected verses and make a comment or two. Acts chapter 2, verse 14. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judah and all who live in Jerusalem, let it be known to you and listen to what I say. Then I'd ask you to skip down to the 22nd verse. You that are Israelites, listen to what I say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds, power, and wonder, and signs that God do, did through him among you as you yourselves know. This man handed over to you according to the definite plan and for knowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. Verse 24. But God raised him up, having freed him from death because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. Verse 32. This Jesus raised up and of that all that us are witnesses, being therefore exalted at the right hand of God and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out on this that you both see and hear. Skip over to verse 37. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, brothers, what must we do? Peter said to them, repent and be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness that your sins may be forgiven and that you may receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And that's where I would stop when they heard this, they asked the question, what must we do? After all that we've experienced this morning, what we've seen, what we've heard, what we've shared, what we've been informed about and empowered by the crucifixion, the dread of death. And Howard Thurman says there are three aspects of death that people struggle with. The dread, they dread it, they ignore it, they accept it. We must accept that the Christ Jesus was crucified. It's real. Not a drama, not a play, not a musical. All that seeks to amplify it, not art. That seeks to amplify it. Thank you, bro. But it was a fact that God commended his love for us, all of us, them, then, us, now, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus was crucified. Died a cruel death on a cross. Absolutely. 
They walked away, no anticipation, because there was no precedent. Or I know we talk about Elijah in the chariot ride and Moses being carried away on the other side of the mountain, but no precedent for one being placed in a grave, grave sealed for that person to ever live again. But God reached down. In fact, he had never stopped reaching and never was with the Christ. Say that another way, Pastor. That even with Christ and God in your heart and in your life, there are some things that we will go through. Are you listening? Has nothing to do with your not being a Christian or being a Christian, but when you accept the gift of life, there are some things that we will not be exempt from. Sickness, pain, death, and dying. All of us at some point will get a text from death and it won't be junk mail. He died. Acknowledge that. Three days. God raised him from the dead was seen by the apostles and the elders. He broke bread with them according to the gospel of St. John. He was seen by Peter the apostle who was one time the denier. He was seen by him and this is that same one who was a denier and lived in denial and dread not only for the life of Christ but for his own life who lived in utter dread and fear and anxiety now that he has been empowered and seen the Lord and empowered with the Holy Spirit. He comes right back to the same crowd who were the crucifiers, who knew him as a denier and a fearful one, and say, listen, y'all, you need to hear the word of the Lord. That we're witnesses of his death, burial, and resurrection. That God handed him over it wasn't just a human act, but God was still active in his life. And he demonstrated that by raising him from the dead. They listened to his sermon. They pondered what he said. They didn't just skip over it. They knew it was the truth because they knew some of the same crowd that had hollered crucify him talk to me somebody they knew it was true because the soldiers were there and the testimony was true that they had to say that you know we, we saw we, we, we experienced the power uh, they knew it was true because sisters came back and said we had seen him the men on the road of Emmaus say did not our hearts burn as he talked with us on the roadside they knew it was true and after hearing the words from this once denier, they listened. And before the benedictus, before the benediction, before they left, I hope you hear the word. They raised the question with the preacher. He didn't have to open the doors of the church and say, whosoever will. But before he could finish, the persons who had heard and seen and experienced in a worshipful way what we've experienced this morning. Those in the crowd who had been deniers, those in the crowd who were sinners and knew that they had sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Those in the crowd that had eaten his bread and walked away nonchalant. Those in the crowd with a piquant sternness and bitterness that refused to submit to the will of God. They were all there. But someone in the congregation, speaking without a formal vote, talked in a plural and not in a single. Brothers, what must we do? 
And that's where I stop, right there. It's not on us. It's on you. And you have to respond. And you will respond. Either by saying, I ain't ready yet. Talk to me. Well, you know, Easter's Easter. Oh, no. Or remaining in the hardness of your heart or your apathy or your indifference. It's on you. But they said, speaking in a plural for all of them, men, women, young, old, they were all there. What must we do in order to be saved? He said, I'm glad you asked. He said, you must repent of your sins. Metanoia. Feel godly sorrow and not brag about the wrong that you've done. But feel remorse in your heart. Ask God's forgiveness of your sin. And then receive the powerful gift of the Holy Spirit. Easter is a reminder. The other day, I was uh, paying some bills. Yeah, preachers have bills too. Uh, Orkin uh, came by and uh, did what they do, and they sent the bill. I think less than five days after he had gone, I get a bill from Orkin. Gave the amount and uh, told me when it was due. I think it was a day or two late. Before I could get them the check, I got another bill from Orkin. And I said, wait a minute, I just paid that. And I went and checked. And then less than 10 days, I got another bill. I checked again, it was the same date for the procedure that they had done on that particular day. I said, something ain't right. I said, now if I mess around and write another check, then I've paid them twice for the same bill, but they're not gonna send me my money back. I called, they had the number. So I called and I said, um, and they gave me the name and uh, I called for the name and the lady said, well, I can help you. I said, but I'm calling for the person who sent the bill. She said, oh, he's the manager. And uh, I can help you with your question. I told her what it was. And she said, give me your account number. And I gave it to her. She said, oh, your bill is paid. I said, I know it's paid. I said, but why did you keep sending me these bills past due when you had my money? She said, oh. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, your account is paid, Mr. Jones, and uh, we just do that to remind the customers that their bill is due. How many reminders that God has to send you? Before you know your bill is due. Amen. I appeal to you, my brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, that you will present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Lord. We're going to stand now and sing as we prepare to leave one another, but never the presence of the Lord. The question was asked over 2,000 years ago. You can answer it today by accepting the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Uniting with a Christian church, friendship is a Christian church. By letter, by Christian experience, was a candidate for baptism. I appeal to you whether you're in the balcony or online, don't allow another day, another Easter to go by in expressing your gratitude to the Lord 
for what he's done for you. Whosoever will, as the Spirit will lead you, let them come. Music ministry, whatever the Lord leads you to do, y'all go ahead and do it. That's good. Would you come? Whoever you are, wherever you are, we're not judges. We're your brothers and sisters. And we welcome you to join us as we walk and work together and serve the Lord in utmost gratitude. Whosoever will, at last and did. At last and did. My Savior. My Savior. And did. My sovereign. Would he devote that sacred for such at the cross? At the cross, where I first saw the light as a burden. speak a benedictus and I ask you to speak it now for we ask it in the name of God the Father Jesus Christ the Son and the blessed Holy Spirit Amen Amen and Amen God bless you have a wonderful day